In fact, Life Africa, Janie Africa's child, was killed in one of these incidents. And the police denied the existence of the child altogether. I mean, come on. C give those cops the Grand Dragon Racist Achievement Award right there. You know? Mm -hmm. Big round of applause for, for being a vicious racist and a gaslighter of the highest order, you guys. I mean, that takes mm. some balls, you know? If you're wondering if the Jedi mind trick can be used for evil, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. The Philadelphia police got you covered. Okay? They're... They're all basically Sith Lords that traded in their lightsabers for a gun and a badge. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you guys might notice that uh, you, you, you hear a little bit of laughter in the background of these, uh, of these videos, of the Forkful of Noodles videos. And that's because these videos were recorded in front of a live virtual audience. That's right. I perform these, these shows over Zoom in front of a virtual audience that uh, laughs and participates through the show, and it's a really fun time. And if you uh, want to be a part of that show, you totally can. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, and snag tickets for these shows. I do them once a month on the last Friday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern at 5 p.m. Pacific. They're $10, but if $10 is a little bit too much, if you're struggling financially and you still want to come check out this show, that's not a problem. Uh, reach out to me, send me an email, DM me on Twitter, send me a message on Facebook, various different ways you can communicate with me. Let me know that you want to check out the show and, and you've hit some financial hard times, and I will get you a free code for the show so you can come, hang out, enjoy a, 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 a comedy show that addresses issues that you won't hear on corporate mainstream media, uh, and, and, and be around some like-minded, wonderful people. Uh, so again, if you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, you can snag your tickets and join the live virtual comedy shows that happen every single month. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy this video. Okay, so I know some of you guys are thinking, well, Krish, that Tulsa thing happened like a hundred years ago, okay? Things have changed. Okay, we got a black president, followed by two of the whitest men you could ever imagine. But... <laughs> And oldest. <laughs> but, yeah. But we had that one. We had that one. Well, let's not forget that the white dudes uh, are, are responsible for pretty horrific things. In fact, one of them is responsible for setting up institutionalized racism in this country, and the other one just benefited from it. Mm hmm. We, I mean, we still see this kind of stories in our society today, right? And stories like this are often hidden from the public. We can see that in the way that police brutality videos are hidden from the public. And I'll use a conservative's favorite line when it comes to privacy, right? If you don't have anything to hide, why not just let the public poke around in those body cam footages? It's no big deal, right? It's probably going to show that the cops are innocent, right? It's not like every single fucking body cam image shows that the cops are... It can't be every... Is it? Is it every single one? It's every single one. <laughs> Another one of America's hidden human rights violations was in 1985 when the Philadelphia Police Department blew up a neighborhood in West Philly. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you might know West Philadelphia as the homeland of one Will Smith before he gained his royal status. <laughs> to a lot of other people, it's proof of America's one of America's worst domestic atrocities of all time. This story starts in 1972 when a man named John Africa started the MOVE organization. And that's not an acronym for anything. Their philosophy was simply everything that's alive moves. If it didn't, it'd be dead. It's pretty simple, and I kind of like it. Go great on a t-shirt. <laughs> but MOVE were primarily naturists, right? And the whole, whole family took the last name Africa in honor of John Africa. And they believed in nature's law. 
they stated that true law is self-explanatory and self-enforcing. Which means contracts with them were like a page or so and very easy to read and comprehend, you know? They barely use words like thee or thou or client. <clears throat> and they don't have any fine print, which the only time fine print is used is if you're an asshole, you know? <laughs> only assholes use fine prints, and they're definitely trying to take your firstborn child. That's definitely <laughs> what they're trying to do. Their point of view of right and wrong was also a bit nuanced, right? They believed that just because something is a law doesn't mean it's right. As they point out on their website, slavery was legal, and so was killing Native Americans. And until recently, it was legal for the police to put their knee on the back of your neck as a way to, quote, subdue you. <laughs> Yeah, we the people realized that that was fucked up pretty damn quick. You know, we didn't need a, a complexly worded document to determine that. The MOVE organization would render lawyers obsolete, and the film Liar Liar would just become an art piece instead of some people's first R-rated lawyer movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be fun. <laughs> They were also huge environmentalists and believed that all life on this planet is equally important. So they were huge advocates for animal rights. And they were such big animal rights activists that they had several different types of animals at their house. And they also had buckets of raw meat for them, which the neighbors would often complain about. Which, come on, when's the last time you really saw a pack of dogs barbecuing out there, you know? It's been a minute. It's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute. You gotta be on the right kind of drugs. <laughs> To see that they were also anti-technology <laughs> that, that was very that was a very specific c point <laughs> <laughs> move was also anti-technology right part of their philosophy was to go back to the hunter-gatherer days but another part of their philosophy was anti-corporation and anti-capitalist they believed that technology and science in the hands of capitalism and greed would end up destroying the planet. Boy, I wonder where they got that idea from. So, so to them, the best thing to do was to just get rid of all technology to altogether and move to a much simpler form of life. Move believed in a minimalistic community living and community parenting. Women in Move would give unassisted births and believed in breastfeeding. They also had the entire family raise the kids. I mean, MOVE really took the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, very seriously, you know? Whereas some people in America believe that parenting uh, is putting on YouTube and then, and then letting that kind of parent the child, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, and as we all know by now, uh, YouTube is a sinister bitch. YouTube will show your child hardcore porn involving superhero bucks. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. I wish that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Move also believed that they should, uh, they should all be armed, not just for hunting purposes, but also for self-defense. In fact, they held political rallies in favor of the Second Amendment, which often offended their neighbors who then called the cops on them. Look, I've watched large white men enter a Starbucks like it was the end of the Predator movie, okay? And and people just look at that guy and go, but that's just kooky Carl in his arsenal. But, but black folks exercising their rights to the Second Amendment yields an entire army to stop them. This is why racism is objectively dumb, right? Racists believe that black people to be an inferior race, but fear them for using the same weapons that they do for self-defense. Yeah. Give these people the gold medal for mental gymnastics at the next Olympics. They did it. They won. Nobody can contort their brain like the racists can. Now, most of their altercations with the police would often turn violent. Go figure, right? And these cops would use water cannons to force their way into their homes and during these bouts of violence the move women have reported miscarriages due to attacks from the police in fact 
Life Africa, Janie Africa's child, was killed in one of these incidents. And the police denied the existence of the child altogether. I mean, come on. C give those cops the Grand Dragon Racist Achievement Award right there. You know? Mm -hmm. Big round of applause for, for being a vicious racist and a gaslighter of the highest order, you guys. I mean, that takes mm. some balls, you know? If you're wondering if the Jedi mind trick can be used for evil, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. The Philadelphia police got you covered. Okay? They're... They're all basically Sith Lords that traded in their lightsabers for a gun and a badge. Now, in 1977, the city obtained a warrant to evict the MOVE organization. And they ended up staying in their home for an extra year. And they made a deal with the city to turn over their guns if, the, if members of their organization were let out of prison. And the city kept up their end of the bargain, but MOVE didn't. And in 1978, MOVE was forcefully taken out of their homes in a shootout with the Philadelphia police. And this only ended when an officer was shot and killed. Now, everyone thought Move did it, right? But the medical evidence shows that the officer was shot from the back when the members of Move were standing right in front of him. And much like the Kennedy assassination, the official report in the response to the public's questions are, uh, hey, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Why are you asking questions? Who let you people in here? By 1985, they were in a second house that they reconstructed, and they added additional layers of concrete and other tactics to make their house more bulletproof. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the house next to move. Members of the bomb squad would reach a hole into the basement and onto the second floor of 6223. The purpose was to breach a hole, put a pepper fogger through the wall, leaving the first floor for an avenue of escape for the move people. Um, we breached part of the wall. Officer Miller got the pepper fogger started. And I remember standing next to him when he pushed it through the wall. It had a, about a four-foot pipe. He got it up and he got it running. But he only got it so far in and he hit something else. And the conclusion that we drew at that time, that they had walls inside the walls. We had strategies to help protect us, you know. It's we know Africa. how these people come. We realized that we're, this, is, this was not what we anticipated. They didn't blow three-inch holes in the party wall. They blew off the whole front of our house. Look, these precautions were taken because the amount of abuse that they took from the cops, right? They were still doing their loud anti-capitalist rallies, and the neighbors complained about profane music and as I said that sentence I'm sure there's a Karen somewhere that just clutched her pearls at the thought of this and at this point the cops had obtained a warrant for the move organization because of parole violations contempt of court illegal firearm possession and making terroristic threats I mean most of the threats were telling people the truth about how toxic the capitalist system actually is 500 police officers descended on the house to serve the warrant. And I'm sure somebody thought, hey, maybe we could just like send one squad car to the house. But the commissioner decided, eh, it's a fucking Tuesday. Let's get the whole force out there. You know, we'll, we'll make it like a fun racist bonding experience. <coughs> and, then, and then we can all go for ice cream later, you know. Yeah, everybody will have vanilla. That's it. Those are the that's the only ice cream flavor. No chocolate. Anybody that orders <laughs> chocolate is fired. <laughs> the cops came over the loudspeaker, uh, loud loudspeaker, yelling, "This is America." And they were right. It was America. A large group of overly armed white thugs ready to murder a group of environmentalists whose biggest crime was a noise violation, and having more meats than Arby's. The Philadelphia police's onslaught on the Africa family started with pumping water through a water cannon into the house. They then pumped 10,000 rounds into the house. And this is where the bulletproofing came in handy. The additional concrete barriers protected the people inside the house. This went on for an hour and a half. And sure, if you're watching Lord of the Rings, 
They still haven't started their journey yet. But 90 minutes of bullets is absurd no matter how you shake it. <laughs> now, after a few hours, Mayor Wilson Good, uh, who hated the MOVE organization, approved Commissioner Gregor Sambo, uh, Sambor to use an explosive on the house. Using a helicopter, they dropped two C4 bombs on the house. One of them connected with a gas generator on the roof, setting fire to the whole house. Mm -hmm. As the fire raged on, the police commissioner told the fire chief to let it burn mm -hmm. and put it out later. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Commissioner Sambor thought all firemen were also pyrokinetics. <laughs> Which is, which is a nerd way of saying they, they can control fire. <laughs> but of course they are not, and the fire burned out of control. As members of MOVE would try to come out of the house, the cops would shoot at them, forcing them back into the burning house. Right. Yeah, it's like that game that you play when you're a kid, you know? Would you rather die in a house fire or being shot to death by the racist police? And... Every time somebody brings up a game like that, I, I always have to ask, <laughs> why the fuck are we playing this game? What 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 is the why why are that why are those the only options that are available? Like is is can we can we add a different option? Can we add like <laughs> would would I rather die in a house fire or like pet puppies? Because I would choose I would choose that one is like an easy like can we have like a nice option? This is why I don't get invited to parties very often. <laughs> By the end of all this, 11 people were dead, including John Africa, and five of them were children. 60, 60 houses were completely destroyed, and 250 people were left homeless. The only survivors from the Africa family were Ramona and 13-year-old Birdie. Ramona was arrested and incarcerated for seven years for rioting and conspiracy after the cops bombed her house. Mm -hmm. This is like punishing a serial killer's victim's family for not being, quote, careful enough. <clears throat> so they go and be like, look, Mrs. Rodney, okay, if you were a better parent, your son wouldn't have been eaten, Okay. Now we're going to let Mr. Dahmer go back to his house and live out his days and, as an upstanding citizen who has taken population control under his supervision. Otherwise, heads are going to roll. <laughs> Otherwise, heads are going to roll. <laughs> this is protocol, you guys. Now, a commission that investigated the incident found the event to be unconscionable and determined that the, the neighborhood wouldn't have been bombed if it were a white neighborhood. But no penalties are awarded to the officials involved in the bombing because in America, racism isn't a crime. It's just a way of life. But, you know, Mayor Good did make a public apology because it was bad PR if he didn't. And I'd like to say that this is where the story ends, but nope. This is the post credit scene to the horrific move bombing incident. Now, the residents of the neighborhood were promised rebuilt homes, and the city chose a cookie-cutter contractor to rebuild the houses on the cheap, which yielded homes to have some problems. And one of the mayors straight up said he doesn't care about what happens to this neighborhood. Finally, Mayor Rendell, we got an agreement with Mayor Mendel to, he was gonna fix the major problems with the houses. We, we asked Mayor Rendell, could we have a second opinion about the condition of our properties? And we were able to get uh, the Army Corps of Engineers to come out and do an evaluation. They were built below code, but yet they were certified for occupancy, which implies that they meet all codes and all standards, but they did not but they told us they did. And then um, Street was elected. He was the worst yet. He was, he was of the four so far, uh, Nutter's running him a close second, but Street was the bottom line animal, okay? 
what he did, what what he did was just blatantly said, I'm not doing it. I mean, we got a contract. We got a signed contract from the mayor. And Schmier Street just blatantly said, I'm not going to do it. Now, most of the residents after this left, and the ones that remain, like these folks here, are trying to basically prevent gentrification. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they do. They go to primarily low-income black neighborhoods around the country and create conditions that are unlivable and then force these people out so they can gentrify the space. Look, people need homes, not another fucking shop that sells pottery at an unaffordable price in a fucking mini mall. <coughs> Nobody cares about a... What's that? A anthropology? Who gives a shit? <laughs> fuck your decorative linens. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and look, I'd like to tell you that that's the worst thing about this post credit scene, right? But it is not... After the bombing, it was really, really hard to figure out which bodies belonged to who since most of the bodies were badly mangled. But two of the children, Tree and Delicia Africa's remains, were taken from the crime scene, mishandled during transport, and given to Penn State and Princeton for academic purposes. The parents, who were in prison at the time of the bombing, were not notified and their permission wasn't given. This means two prestigious schools where you either have to be very rich or open to a massive amount of debt to attend use two kids, two kids' bodies from a war zone for studies. And as they learned the anatomy of the human body, they didn't learn the anatomy of their racist institutes that thought it was fine to use two black children's bodies for science without the consent of the fucking family. And it really shows you how deep racism has permeated into our society that even academia is colored with it. Now, Penn State did make a public apology because, you know, PR, but no apologies were given to the mothers of these children. Princeton, on the other hand, wanted to know what their annual income was before they made an apology because, you know, the poors don't count. Right. Look, you don't have to agree or disagree with MOVE to see what the cops did as a crime against humanity. Right? The worst thing they did was be loud and have meats in their backyard. And if that's awful to you, then don't visit a college dorm room, okay? <laughs> Raw meats smell like roses compared to the smell of sweat, spunk, and missing ramen. It's awful. I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> Look, and, and with this information not addressed or talked about, there's a likelihood it'll repeat. It also shows you why some of these newer civil rights and activist movements are decentralized yet very organized. Because if they were centrally and publicly organized, the cops, the intelligent agencies, and politicians will blow them up like they're the final act of a Rambo movie. And the real question is, knowing all of this, how can people actually trust the justice system in America? Look, America's history is full of these sort of atrocities, right? From the treatment of the Black Panthers, the nonstop McCarthyism, the treatment of the indigenous, oh. Julian Assange, and so much more. It's really, really hard to say that this is a country of good guys. So for them to come out and chastise another country because they don't live up to the American standard is a double standard. And when you call out these atrocities, people just keep telling you that, you know, if you if you hate it here, then why don't you just go back to where you came from? There is no perfect country. And that's not even the point. Look, I call out injustice and inequalities everywhere. Those things aren't exclusive to America. It's a humanity problem. We just have to try to be less cruel to each other. And we have to learn how to detect manipulation when we see it. The reality is I live here in America, which means this is the country I physically see citizens in pain. And this is where I know I can try and make a more just and equal world. And this is why sharing stories like this 
are important. And these stories are why America can't claim that they're the bastions of human rights. The end. That's great. We go, Chris. Yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm and if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan haha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you would, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows. Uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as uh, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.